every cruise we take, we run into little tips and tricks, ways to change how we cruise. And no matter how we discover it, I thought it'd be great to share with you some of our newest, best Royal Caribbean tips learned over the last year, up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. And while our team and I have been going on Royal Caribbean cruises for years and years and years, we still discover new ways, new tricks, and new tips all the time. So I thought it'd be a good idea to share with you some of the latest ones that we've come across over the last few months to help you have an amazing cruise experience. First up is a trick that I've had to use a couple of different times, and this is what happens when the Royal Caribbean app doesn't work the way you want it to in the cruise terminal. Now, I actually like the Royal Caribbean app a lot. It's been very helpful, and it's made the check-in process super easy. But on a couple of occasions, I've run into a scenario in which I get to the cruise terminal, open my Royal Caribbean app, and for some reason, the set sail pass won't show up. It's kind of random. I haven't quite figured out a pattern to it yet, but my first tip is to make sure like in the day or two before your cruise, to take a screenshot of your set sail pass. There's been at least two cruises that I can think of off the top of my head this year in which I've gotten to the terminal and the set sail pass won't open and it comes up with an error message like we've hit a snag or something to that effect and you can't get it. And if you don't have your set sail pass available, then you have to go through the manual process when you get there. It's not a big deal. It just takes up more time. So instead, what you want to do is take a screenshot of your set sail pass while you're at home and it's working just so you have it as a backup. Now, some people might say, Matt, why don't you print out your set sail pass? That way you have that. The problem with that is I don't want to deal with the printouts. You got to have an extra piece of paper. It gets crumpled. You might forget it on your printer. Having your set sail pass as a screenshot is a good backup. It allows you to remain digital and there's no extra heft. Now that paper is hefty, but you kind of get what I'm going with this one. Take a screenshot of your boarding pass. It's a great backup tool. Number two, the fare drop alert on Royal Caribbean's website. So Royal Caribbean has a new price tracking feature and it's not quite as like robust as maybe we'd like it to be. It is a feature that's there and something to think about. So when you go to the Royal Caribbean website and you do a mock booking, you look for a cruise that you're looking to book there, there is now an option to add your cruise to the watch list. When you're looking at the specific sailings, the specific dates, you'll see watch list. And if you click on that and you're signed into your account, it will add it to your account and have it as under watching. And that's it. Royal Caribbean will monitor your fare for you and it sends you an email periodically if the price has gone down. Now, it's not quite clear how often it gets updated, how often it checks and how accurate it is, but it's a feature and this might be really good if you're eyeing a particular cruise, you're not sure about it, but you wanna keep an eye on it, maybe back of your mind like, hey, I would book this cruise if it were to drop a little bit. And in this day and age, there are other websites and apps out there that do something similar. I don't trust any of them, quite frankly. So this is at least another option in your tool belt and maybe it works for you, maybe it doesn't, but it's nice to have that as a feature that's out there. Number three tip I've learned recently is to skip the fixed price menu at Izumi. So Royal Caribbean made a change to the Zoomy menu earlier this summer, in which if you do the fixed price menu, if you order any sushi rolls, you're only gonna get half the size of the rolls. But if you order a la carte, you get the full size. I don't know why this is a thing, but it's a thing. Anyway, if you have the dining package or you're booking a Zoomy on your own, when you get to the restaurant, let your waiter know you don't wanna do the fixed price menu. The fixed price menu gives you essentially a certain selection of dishes an appetizer, two large dishes, AKA entrees, and a dessert. And the issue I have with their twofold, first of all, is the sushi size. If you order any rolls under the fixed price, you will be instead given half size portions. And the other issue is that you're getting a dessert and I'm all for desserts, don't get me wrong. The Izumi desserts are nothing particularly special. I don't think anyone who comes up with a top 10 Royal Caribbean desserts list is gonna have the Izumi desserts on there. But more importantly, I would rather take that money, that value that you have for eating at Izumi and maybe get an extra sushi roll or something to that effect. So instead, pay a la carte, which means you'll have a stipend if you have the Royal Caribbean dining package and anything above that stipend, you would pay extra for. In my experience, this works a lot better, especially if you're not interested in dessert, but more importantly, you wanna get as much sushi as possible. Number four, there's actually a wrong way to apply sunscreen. This is actually really interesting. Getting sunburned is no joyous experience. It's really bad for your skin as well. And our staff has always struggled with it. We often have a discussion about who got sunburned recently on a cruise. And if it can be avoided, then it absolutely should. 
A recent study showed that how much more effective sunscreen lotion is over all other varieties that are out there. Now, some of you may not want to hear this, but it's really eye-opening how much more effective sunscreen lotion is over the other varieties. The FDA requires that sunscreen, no matter what type, needs to be tested after two milligram per square centimeter of product. Two milligrams of powder sunscreen or spray sunscreen are not the same as two milligrams of sunscreen lotion. That's just a big difference in application, and I don't think most people understand that when they apply it. So while spray sunscreen can still be good, if you're looking for the most effective sunscreen out there that won't require you to reapply every 15 minutes, you're definitely better off with the lotion. Earlier this year, Royal Caribbean quietly changed over its coffee menu at Cafe Promenade and Cafe Latitudes, and it looks a lot like the Starbucks drinks menu. Now, as you know, if you have a diamond drink or a drink package, you can't use that at a Starbucks kiosk, but you can use them at Cafe Promenade or Cafe Latitudes or Cafe 270. And the nice thing is this is the same basic Starbucks drinks that they're served at a kiosk, but it's not an official kiosk, so it's included with your drink package. Therefore, if you have a drink package or you have diamond drinks to use, go to Cafe Promenade or La Cafe Latitudes or one of those other places and redeem them for those macchiatos and lattes and espressos those are included with that it's a huge benefit and so much better most people don't know this exists yet but this is available as an option at those locations number six is a hack how to use the chat feature if you have younger children so the real caribbean app has the chat feature included no additional cost that's great except the Royal Caribbean app won't let you create an account for anybody under the age of 13. So to get around this, we've discovered that you can just sign someone in with the same person twice. So as an example, if my wife wants to sign in and then my kids want to use their account as well, they can sign in as her on a second device. It doesn't limit you to one person per cruise to be able to use it. So my wife can be on her phone, the kids can use their iPad and they're both logged in under my wife's name. And the only issue with this particular hack is notifications because whoever picks it up first, the other one doesn't see it as a notification because the system thinks that they picked it up. However, in a pinch, it's still better than obviously investing in a internet package or worse going with walkie talkies or something else that just doesn't work nearly as effectively. While the Royal Caribbean chat feature isn't perfect or my favorite messaging app on earth, it's free and you can't argue with that fact. So instead you can use multiple accounts within the same cruise that way you can ensure that the chat feature can work and you have an ability to talk to your kids while on board the ship. And the last hack is kind of a big one. It might not work for everybody, but I wanted to bring it up here because enough people are starting to really pick up on this. And that is that you can gamble enough in the casino to win free cruises and or free drinks on board. Now, gambling is by definition, well, risky, and this is not for everybody. And if your budget doesn't allow for it, and if you're not a big cruiser, if you'll do once a year cruising, this tip is not for you. But if you're taking three cruises a year, four cruises a year or more, you might want to look into this tip. So Royal Caribbean's Casino Royale has its own loyalty program. Within that program, it rewards you if you gamble enough to reach certain tiers, it's just like Crown and Anchor Society, but it's based on how much you gamble rather than how much you visit, like with Crown and Anchor Society. Anyway, if you gamble enough to make it to the prime level, which is the second level up from choice, then you're going to be, have the option to get a free cruise and free alcoholic beverages in the casino for an entire year. Now, I don't have to tell you that a free cruise and free alcoholic drinks in the casino is potentially very lucrative, but it requires a certain amount of assumptions. And of course you have to be okay with it and be able to afford all this. Never mind the fact that gambling is going to cost you money out the door. So it's not exactly a pure profitability, but if you cruise enough, this could work for you. The way it works is if you accrue 2,500 points or more, within a calendar year beginning April 1st to March 31st across any of your cruises, it's cumulative, not in one particular sailing, then you'll reach the prime status. And that gives you benefits, like I mentioned, free drinks at the casino while the casino is open, annual tier free inside cabin cruise that can be used on any seven night cruise, excluding holiday cruises, and a waiver on cash advances in the casino. So how do you get 2,500 points? Well, you need to gamble enough to accrue it. Royal Caribbean doesn't have an exact mathematical equation for how many dollars you have to spend in order to earn one point, but it's somewhere around three or five dollars gambled to earn one point. Now, it's not based on how much you win, just how much you gamble. So if you were to win all your bets, that'd be great. You'd just be gambling and wagering that money to move forward with it. 
And the nice thing is it's cumulative. So if you take three cruises a year, you could spread out 2,500 points across three different sailings and make it up as long as you reach 2,500 total by March 31st of the year. And then you're good for the rest of the sailing. Heck, if you get it on April 2nd, right, which is the beginning of Casino Royale's year, you'll qualify for all of these benefits for the current year that runs through March 31st and then still qualify for it again next year, if that makes sense. And it's kind of confusing on that. For example, if a passenger reaches prime tier on August 30th, 2023, they'd be entitled to all prime benefits from August 30th, 2023 until March 31st, 2025. Passenger tiers will be indicated on their cabin card, and once they accumulate the required points, they immediately are entitled to the benefits. If you got to a tier in the middle of the cruise, heck, the host can hook you up with a sticker with that new tier. Regarding the free cruise, there is a catch with those. First, you'll still have to pay taxes, fees, and port expenses. And second, the free cruise only covers two people in the cabin. Anybody extra in the cabin, like your kids, will have to pay normally for that. Now we're talking about gambling. So again, for the eighth time, I need to remind everybody that there is inherent risks with gambling and you shouldn't gamble for the sake of trying to win a cruise because you're gonna be spending money anyway. But it seems like a lot more people are picking up on getting to Prime and Casino Royale because of the fact you can get free cruises, discounts on cruises, the free drinks, with those costs going up in general over Royal Caribbean, if you're already kind of a semi-gambler, not a big gambler, but you like to gamble a little bit and you cruise enough times, like three or four times a year, this could be a really interesting tip for you to, in order to get more cruises and pay less overall. Well, I hope you picked up some new strategies for your next cruise and that way you can save some money, time, or maybe even be able to just have a better cruise overall. Hopefully these new tips and tricks will help you out and heck, Hopefully we'll have even more tips and tricks coming for you in the next couple of months. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.